Okay. Uh, good day, everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin. I'm studying at the University of Hassel. And today I'm going to give a presentation about a Ghent gives the street back to the people. Uh, so I will present you Ghent. Here you can see some pictures already from Ghent. Uh, Ghent is the third biggest city in Belgium. And Belgium is uh, located uh, between Netherlands and France and Germany. Uh, Ghent is uh, situated in the east, uh, in the west part of uh, Belgium, you can see here. Uh, now, we're now we're going to give some uh, data about Ghent. Uh, you can see the, the map of Ghent. Uh, in the north of Ghent you have the port of Ghent. Uh, here you can see the center of Ghent. And uh, there is a, a, ring, a ring round about Ghent, you can see here. And the surface of Ghent is uh, around uh, 15,000 uh, uh, hectare surface. Uh, in Ghent there are living uh, 246,000 uh, inhabitants. Uh, Ghent is a uh, mm, student city. There are a lot of schools in Ghent. There are about uh, 300 schools. And uh, there are uh, about uh, uh, 130,000 pupils and students. In Ghent. Now, I'll give some information about the model split. Uh, all, uh, there are 67% uh, of, uh, no, 59% uh, uh, use the car in Ghent. There are a lot of uh, people who walk in Ghent because 70% go on foot in Ghent. There are also a lot of bikers, there are 14%. And uh, bus, tram, train are not very popular in Ghent, but they are used. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the mobility in Ghent. Uh, the strategic goals about the mobility that uh, Ghent uh, developed are Ghent must be easy and selectively accessible for all target groups in space and time. And they also want uh, to work about coordination, communication, regulations, Research units and research are of vital strategic importance. They found that very important in their mobility plan. And uh, the main question uh, in Ghent is do we choose for car or other things? So you can choose for car, and then you have some kind uh, of city on the right side, or you can choose for walking and cycling, and then you have some kind of view. Uh, because uh, now, in the days, there, is a, uh, there are a lot of cars in Ghent. So, these are the same streets. That is the oldest one. There you have a nice view. Children are playing on the street. But now, they, these days, it's impossible to play on the streets. So, you have to think about how do you manage your mobility in your city. Oops. So, uh, Ghent uh, developed a plan and they want to humanize the street. They want to give the street back to the people, so not cars, they are thinking about people uh, by foot or uh, by bike, it doesn't matter, but uh, they want to make uh, meeting places in the, uh, in the city, so it will be a very pleasant uh, city to be in there. Uh, and then yeah, Ghent has, has developed a mobility plan, and these are some uh, points, of the, the most important points, of the building plan is a reduction of uh, redundant car traffic. Uh, also, no traffic, uh, car traffic uh, through the city anymore. They want more space for cyclists and pedestrians. Also, uh, free driveways uh, for public transport, so you don't have problems with uh, delays of tra traffic transport, with uh, traffic jams of cars. Uh, also, um, um, they want a pleasant city to live work and visit, because tourism is also a very important part in Ghent. So now uh, we'll give some examples of uh, how Ghent gives the streets back to the people. Uh, they uh, developed a, a pedestrian era from a, from a, uh, they developed a pedestrian area that's about uh, 35 uh, hectare. So it's a big space 
where only pedestrians or cyclists are allowed. So no cars are allowed in that uh, space. And this space is in the center of Ghent, the old city of Ghent. There are no cars more uh, allowed. And you can you see already a, a picture of uh, the street. Uh, so Ghent gives uh, the streets and back to the pedestrians and the cyclists. And so you get a nice view of the city. No cars are on the pictures. Uh, but there are uh, some exceptions uh, because when you want to do, deliver some goods to shops you are allowed to go in the area but there are strict time tables so you only are allowed at the morning or at the evening time at the day you, you may not uh, deliver goods to a shop or something uh, and also uh, for professional reasons you can get the permission to go with your car in the city but then when you go in the city, in the testing zone, you have to drive very slow. You may not drive faster than 30 km per hour. Um, at this moment, there is not a lot of control on it. There is control on it, but uh, at the end of this year, there will be a detection system. So when a car uh, drives through the pedestrian area and it's not allowed to be there, it gets a fine. And then the fines are being very high. So nobody will drive through the pedestrian area in the future. Uh, they also, uh, again, did also a reconstruction of the public area. So the public spaces will be uh, very nice to stay. Uh, they create a pleasant city to live in. Also, they have better use of the public area uh, and giving the streets back to the people. So you can see also the picture. Uh, a lot of people are sitting uh, on a bank and uh, enjoying the sun and the city. Now, I'll give some examples from uh, the public spaces they reconstruct. This is an old picture. There are a lot of cars at the picture. And uh, it's a place, Gras and Korelai, it calls this place. And uh, nowadays, it looks like this. All the cars are Go, and you only see uh, pedestrians, cyclists, and boats. You can also have a boat trip. And another example of the Korenmarkt. There were a lot of cars at the Korenmarkt, but nowadays you can see there are no cars, only bus, tram, pedestrians, and cyclists. So it's very nice to be there at that place. Also, the Vrijdagmarkt. There was a lot, uh, a big. Uh, uh, parking space, a lot of cars on it, and now the, all the cars are gone. They uh, built a, a parking space on the ground, so you don't see any cars more in the testing zone. Also, there are uh, some uh, festivals, uh, music uh, concerts at uh, the Vrijdagmarkt. Uh, they also developed a tourist signpost. So when tourists come to Ghent, they can find very easily all the tourist attractions. So you only have to follow the, the signs and you come to your tourist attraction. So it's very easy to walk in the city of Ghent uh, to something that you want to look to. They also have a, a pavement action plan. In 2010 <coughs> they developed it. They uh, put a lot of money in uh, reconstruction of pavement. So the pavements uh, were very good, so all the people don't fall in holes or something. The pavements are very good now. And uh, in the first year, they already uh, renewed uh, 10,000 meters of uh, uh, pavements. And uh, in uh, 2014, uh, the plan ends, and then uh, all the pavements in the old city will be perfect. Uh, they also do a lot of uh, campaigns to convince people in Ghent to go uh, by foot or uh, take the cycle. Uh, here, here you can see some campaigns, uh, Ghent, the start of my foot. In English, is uh, Ghent, the city of my feet. And uh, uh, you can see all these posters in the city of Ghent. Uh, they also developed uh, a map for pedestrians. Normally you can get a map from the city to see how, to have, how you have to drive with your car to the city 
the daisy at the vault, uh, especially map for pedestrians. So in line, we can see on the map, if you want to go from this place to this place, it takes, for example, five minutes to walk. They have, uh, all the red lines that are the walking lines to go from one place to another. Each line is, uh, they tell you how long you do to go from A to B. It's uh, very interesting. And uh, you can see of the old city. Thanks for your attention. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. Um, uh, how do you control the cars in the pedestrian area? Do you know how they do it? Now there is uh, police control. So the police is allowed to drive in the pedestrian zone, because they drive very slowly, and then when they see a, a, a car, uh, then they go to the driver and they ask if, if, the, uh, if he or she has permission to be there. Because you, have a, you need a permission to be there. They have some cards for uh, the window, they have to put some cards for the window, so the police can see if they're allowed or not allowed. But now, at the end of the year, they're going to install a traffic cameras and then uh, they uh, recognize your number plate and when your number plate is not allowed to be in the pedestrian zone you get a fine so mm. the control will be better at the end of the year but now it's already very good there are not a lot of cars that drive through <coughs> and people know it's not allowed there are big signs that you don't uh, maybe go with your car to <coughs> Uh, but uh, where the people who live in the center of town, uh, where they park their car? There are, um, can't make uh, uh, 15 parking spaces on the ground, so the people uh, that live in the end, they can park their uh, car on the ground. So do you know how big are the fines if, if they caught you? <laughs> uh, when you are caught, uh, uh, 150 euros. <laughs> and, and these underground parking places, they are free for the, these people? For the inhabitants, the inhabitants they are free for one car. When they have two cars, the second car, they have to pay, I don't know the price, but it's around 150 for one year. Yeah. But uh, tourists and so on have to pay in the parking. Other questions? Uh, it's allowed to keep those um, signs of the cars because in Germany it's uh, totally forbidden. In, in Belgium it was a problem a few years ago, but uh, the law has changed. Ah. So the police now uh, can control your number plate yeah. and uh, your address to the number plate. So, but it's changed. Yeah. So, no, it's okay. not happened in Belgium. <laughs> and, uh, the trend in Belgium is you don't have. Uh, uh, speed limits. Now we have one speed camera, but now in Belgium they are uh, building speed cameras at one point and at a kilometer another speed camera. So they uh, measure your speed at one kilometer. So you don't. Now you have the, the situation people know where the uh, speeding cameras are and they break, and when they're away from the speed camera, they accelerate again. But now it's not possible because you have to drive in that kilometer at the correct speed, otherwise you get a fine. And that's also on uh, your number plate. Yeah. That's a trend in Belgium.